for my own spiritual walk. And then there's encouragement that he speaks to me. Then there's little nuggets that he drops down and he has me do a little Bible study on so I can be enriched with the word of God. It's not just a book to read. It's not just fables. The word tells us that Jesus said himself, he is the way, the truth, and the life. I, I want life. And the word says that I can have life more abundantly. That's my goal. To have life more abundantly. When I um, got the call from pastor asking if I had a word and said I had been working on one, it wasn't what God wanted for today. It's like, okay, Lord, it's still a work in progress. Thank God it's not finished. It's still laying there. What would you have for us, Lord? What would you have for us? And he told me he wants us to be Christians prepared for what's coming. How good is that God? He wants to prepare us for what's coming. He doesn't want us to walk blindly. Oh, I thank him and I praise him for that. James, would you go to prayer, please? Thank you, Jesus. Today, Lord, we thank you that we can listen to your thank word. You, Jesus. God, you sent it, Lord God, to heal us, to reprove us, for correction, Lord God, for thank encouragement, you, for edification. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would hide your servant behind your cross, Oh, yes, Lord, Lord God. God. Your that word comes off my lips, done, Lord. Lord God, would be glorifying to you. It would be truth. Thank it would you, be Jesus. life. Lord God, it would be life, Lord Jesus, this morning. Lord God, we just thank you for everything thank you've already God. done in this service. Lord God, because you are truly here and you are moving by your spirit. So we just ask, yes, Lord God, Jesus. that you would continue to move and to speak. Hallelujah. In name, because you are faithful. In your name, I Yes, pray. Lord, you are. Thank you. I have a title. It's called Speaking the Word. That's what the Lord said. Speaking the Word. Our best example is in all the Old Testament saints. Our best example isn't all the disciples throughout the New Testament. Our best example is Jesus. Jesus is our best example. I want to follow somebody who is victorious. I want to follow somebody who's conquered. And he has. That's what I want. Matthew 4.4. 4. This is Jesus speaking. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. That's what man shall live by. Oh, that's pretty heavy. You mean it's not by my thoughts? That's not how I'm supposed to live? It's not by my way? I want it my way. There used to be a song out that had that verse in there. God's word tells us specifically, Jesus answered the enemy of his soul, and he said, it is written. He knew the word of God. Unfortunately, we have an enemy of our soul. But how do we combat that enemy? 
How do we come against him when he comes against us? He goes before God with railing accusations against us. So how do we fight that? How do we combat that? I'll tell you how you should combat that. You should combat that with the word of God. That's how you should combat it. The word tells us that we are to bring into captivity all those thoughts. And then we are to do something with them. Cast them at his feet. Surrender them to God. I had thoughts coming against me this week. I had situations and circumstances that were just trying to overwhelm me. I didn't just sit down in a chair and throw my hands up. You know why? I belong to part of God's army. I belong in his army. I'm a warrior. I'm a fighter. Don't you mess with my family. I'll mess with you right back with the word of God, which defeats every stinking curse. It defeats every evil thing you try to raise up against my family. The word defeats. Beats it, enemy. And you know how I know? Because I've been in the word. I quote those scriptures. I bring them right back to him and remind him yeah. of the word of God. Yeah. Right. I'm nobody. I am nobody. I'm not anybody special. I'm not. But God's word tells me that I am precious. Tells me that he sings over me. That's what his word tells me. I know everybody in here is saying songs to their little ones, to the grandkids. You hold them and you cuddle them and you sing little precious songs. You don't care how you sound. You don't care. You're singing out of the abundance of love that you have within you. Jesus sings. He sings. The heavens sing over us with love. Because of his great love. Nothing we deserve. Because of his great love. How do you fight the enemy? You've got to know the word of God. You've got to know it. Jesus knew it. He equips us. He doesn't leave us defenseless. There's another time in Matthew... Chapter 4, verse 10. The enemy was still after Jesus. He was still there. He hadn't left. Even though Jesus had used the word, he still hadn't left. Do you have days like that? Huh. I did what Jesus said, but it's not working. Oh, yeah, Pastor, I hear that too. It's not working. This is what Jesus said in verse 10. Jesus said to him, which is Satan, Away with you, Satan! See that exclamation mark? There was some emphasis there. There was something behind it, some feeling. It wasn't away with you, Satan. 
I know, I'm a teacher. Exclamation marks mean feeling, excitement. That's what it means. For it is written. There we go again. Knowing the word. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. How does the enemy try to tempt us? Well, if you do this, if you, oh, come on, you can watch this. It's okay. You can partake in this. It's okay. Nobody in church is around. They don't see what you're doing. What is our response? Do we just do it because it feels good? Do we do it because we want to do it and what God says doesn't matter? Jesus said, it is written. We can't serve two masters. We can't be caught up in this world and then be a Christian just on a Sunday. We can't do that. You know why? I'll tell you why. You'll split hell wide open. He said you can't serve two masters. He says to love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all that is within you. So when you're undecided, and the storms come and you're tossed to and fro and you call the pastor. You just can't stand it. You need his prayers. You need his lifeline. Thank God he's there. But guess what I heard? I heard that he told somebody to read the scriptures. <laughs> read the book see what it tells you about this situation apply it see if you change if the circumstances change I'll be praying for you isn't that a good pastor He's directing you according to the spirit of God, not because of your wants, not because of your insecurities, not because all of a sudden he's the one that, oh, pastor, you got to pray for me. I'm going through this trial, this tribulation, and I just don't know what caused it. What do you do? Nothing. Me and me just after me. Why is the enemy after you? What are you doing? Nothing. What should you be doing? What should you be doing? You should be in the word of God. If you forget part of your armor when you get up in the morning, or you think it's too stinking heavy for you to put on, uh-uh-uh. Right. Nope. God gave it to us for a reason. You can't fight your battle naked. They had on a full armor when they fought their battles. They had every weapon they needed, and so don't we. We have the word of God. We have the living word. We have truth. We have life. We have the way to overcome. And that's by knowing the scriptures and being able to use them. He didn't think the word. He opened his mouth and he spoke. That does two things that God wanted to bring out. You are a hearer of the word, of what you're saying. You are able to hear it. And the enemy is taking notice that you're using a weapon against him. 
That's what it does. It encourages you. The word says that we are to edify one another, to lift one another up. That we are to be doers of the word and not hearers only. That we are supposed to have faith and works going together. Wow. The word says that. Oh, yeah. It says a lot more, too. Yep, that it does. It says that the name of Jesus, it can put how many to flight? I can't even whistle. It puts the enemy to flight. He doesn't always have to be on your shoulder. He doesn't always have to be glued to your hip. He doesn't always have to be on top of your head. He doesn't have to be in your mind. The word of God says, think on things that are pure. Think on things that are just. Think on things that are holy. Think on things that are true. I got my thinker just to going. Say, God, bring your word back to me. Let me, let me remember, Lord. Help my arsenal be full, Lord God. Help it be full, Lord. I use it a lot. And you know what he does? He keeps filling her right up. You know why? Because his word tells me that out of my belly shall flow living water. That's why his word tells me. I believe it. His word flowing out of my mouth. His word coming against the enemy. His word being able to encourage and uplift somebody. His word that's able to take the depression and have it flee. It's his word because it's anointed. Yeah. That's what the difference is. That's what the difference is. Jesus' thoughts, they became action. It became alive. It became alive. He spoke with power and authority. We don't. We don't. You know why I know? Because too many people don't walk victorious. They don't walk victorious. That's how I know. The word says, by their fruit, you shall know them. That's what the word says. I'm not judging anybody. I'm not. I'm going according to the word of God. I counseled a lady this past week. I didn't even want to go counsel that lady. God put her on my heart, and I said, okay, God, I got to spend time with you. I got to spend time with you, Lord. My opinions stink. My thoughts need to be his thoughts. What comes out of my mouth when I minister to somebody needs to be the word of God. Because the word sets people free. I spent time in prayer. I besought God. And you know what God did? Oh, he released me to go. Okay, God. I'm going. That's what my flesh is saying. My spirit is saying, there's victory ahead. There's victory ahead. There's victory. Lord God, let this heart open up. Let this mind open up to be able to receive the victory that you have for them. Because victory's coming. Victory's coming. Victory is mine. If 
I hold my peace, he'll fight my battles. He fought that battle. woo And he won! There was a change that took place in our visit. The mindset changed. The depression of the enemy had to flee. Victory came. Did I get excited? <laughs> yes, I got excited to see a soul set free. You better believe it. Pray for somebody I don't know. But I pray with all my might. I pray in faith believing. You know what the word of God says? How to combat the enemy? I'll tell you what it says. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Take that, enemy. Take that. Using the word. Using the weapons that God has given us for his honor, for his glory. Matthew 28. Is what I'm going to turn to. I'm going to read. Verses 18 through 20. This is Jesus speaking. And he was speaking to his disciples. That's what we are. We are. A disciple of Jesus Christ. What's written here. Is also for us. Jesus came and spoke to them saying. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore. And make disciples of all the nations. Baptizing them in the name of the father. And of the son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And this is a lie from the enemy. Jesus isn't there. He's not with you. You really screwed up. He left. But look at the end of this verse. And verse 20. The promise from God. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Oh, yeah, devil. My God said that he's with me always. Do you have to remember where in scripture it's found? Nope. That'll come. The Holy Spirit will help you with that. It's just knowing it's in there and using it. God said in his word that he would never leave us nor forsake us. That's his promise. We leave him. We leave him on the kitchen counter. We leave him in the bedroom. We leave him when we decide that it's more fun and pleasurable to go do something that we know that Jesus wouldn't go along with us and do. So we leave him at home. You can't. You can't. His word doesn't lie. He said he's with you always. He's with you. Well, I don't feel him. I don't feel him. Well, it's like this. When you go through those dry, barren times and you don't feel him, you quote the word of God. Lord, your word says that you are with me always. You will never leave me nor forsake me even though I don't feel you. 
Your word says opposite of what the enemy of my soul is trying to tell me. I stand on your promises, God. You know, we actually uh, give the enemy way too much credit. We do. It's it just, that's the way it is. We do. We have ourselves involved in there as well. That we do. It's our choices. The enemy didn't make me do it. Oh, the devil made me do it. No, sometimes it's our own choices. It's not the enemy. It's us. Let me share something with you. I know that somebody ministered here in this church, and they ministered, and they said, the repercussions are coming. And I said, God, I rebuke that. He is ministering your word, Lord God. Father, I ask him to hide him in your bosom. Lord God, put a hedge round about him that the enemy cannot penetrate. That your blessings will flow and not repercussions. I believe God when I prayed. I don't know what his end result will be. But I believe God. Why else would he put it on my heart? That he wouldn't get repercussions from preaching the word of God. I know that we do. I know there are times that we minister the word. We expose the enemy. We expose his lies. We expose him. And yep, things happen. Well, I've been stretched. I have uh, overcome this stretching. I have put down, been put down to be smaller than a thumbtack. But I have overcome. I am a warrior and I am in the king's army. I know who I am in Jesus Christ. I am a servant of the Most High God. We all are. We all need to have that mindset. I'm mighty through Jesus. I'm mighty through Christ. We need to have that mindset. Not the mindset, I'm nothing. Can't do nothing. I'm just here. I, I like the people. They got lively music. You have a purpose and a plan. God established it. He did. The enemy is not all powerful. The enemy is not all sufficient. He's not. I just, I'm just telling you what the word says. He's not. He is not all knowing. <laughs> He's not. You know how I know that? Because I read the book. I read the book. I'm going to take you on a little story. Let's go to Job real quickly. Not really. I mean, just in your mind. Let's go to Job. The enemy went before God. And you know what? God said to him, where have you been? Where have you been? And you know what his response was? I've been roaming to and fro throughout the earth. Roaming. No particular home, no stability, no grounded and rootedness. 
He's been roaming to and fro throughout the earth. I'm not a roamer. I'm grounded in Jesus Christ. I've got roots. I know where God wants me to be. I know it. I said, boy, God, that's so good. That's so good, Lord. He went before God. And in order to do all the things that he did to Job, he had to have God's permission. He had to have it. God allowed it. God allowed it. And God showed me something in that. All that he went through, all that his friends went through, coming to him and bringing this accusation and that accusation. And, and, and instead of trying to build him up, and he got more discouraged, he got more despondent, he got more depressed. They weren't helping him. And then, as I counseled a lady this week about Job, God showed up. The Lord showed up. And he lovingly rebuked Job. Has God ever showed up in your pity parties? Oh, whoops. <laughs> I said that out loud, didn't I? <laughs> God lovingly rebuked him. I never read that in there. Then you didn't finish reading the book of Job. You didn't finish reading it. Because God asked him where he was. When he was doing all the wonders that he did. Where were you? You know what changed? After God's conversation with Job, because Job listened to what God was saying, he listened. You know what he did? This blessed my heart. He started praying for his friends. He was praying for his friends. God changed his heart and his mindset. He was praying for his friends. He didn't let the enemy keep stomping his head and bringing back all the things that his friends said. He changed his mindset after God talked to him. He started praying for his friends and then things changed. That's when the change happened. When he was praying for his friends. What a marvelous God we serve. The lies of the enemy. You don't have any friends. Look at them. Look what they said to you. Well, I know contrary to the word of God, I know what happened. He did have friends. He did. And he prayed for them. And there was a change that manifested. And the end of Job was better than his beginning. Because the mindset changed. His conversation with God helped him change his mindset. Lord, I need you to speak to me. I have decisions that I have to make, and the enemy is coming at me like a flood. Oh, look, I got notes on this napkin. God, I need you to speak to me. Speak your word, Lord God. Speak it, Lord God. Bring it back to my memory, Lord. We heard it this morning. Lord, your word is a light. Woo! It illuminates.
lights to dark places. It brings light. The word tells us, he tells us to renew our minds in Christ Jesus. Let there be a transformation. Let there be a shaking. Oh, I like where I'm at. I like what I'm doing. Lord, go shake Lynn, but don't shake me. Let there be a shaking. Let us take part in it together. Let us be able to uphold one another with prayers, with thanksgiving, with praise, as the word says. Let us be part of that army. Let the lives of the enemy be right where they belong, under our feet. They don't belong in our high place. They belong under our feet. That's where the lies of the enemy belong. God isn't able to supply my needs. Huh? Since when has God not been able to supply your needs? His word says that he will. He'll supply your needs. And that's in Philippians 4.19. His word says it. I'm not going there for time's sake. His word says it. You got to know where to go in scripture in order to be able to use what you need against the enemy. That's what you need. If you're tired, dragged down, feeling like you're going through the mully grubs, Get in the word. It's all powerful. He's all sufficient to meet every single need. He'll direct you where to go in scripture. Don't be so prideful that you don't think you need to ask God. You know what? Jesus loved us so much, so much. Ephesians 3.19 is where we're going to go right now. This is how much Jesus loved us. How much he does love us. He says in his word. To know the love of Christ. Which passes knowledge. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Woohoo! I got more coming. I haven't got it all yet. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's, it's better than expecting Christmas presents or a birthday gift. Yes. It's better than that. I've got an expectancy. When is it going to happen? When? When, Lord? When am I going to be full of your fullness? Well, let me tell you. See that pile of rocks right there? When we start getting rid of some of those things that hinder us from being full of his fullness. You can't mix bitter and sweet. The word tells us that. You cannot have bitter and sweet coming out of the same mouth. How can we get full of his fullness? I'm already full myself, Pastor. Oh, whoops. Oh, whoops. No, we can't be full of ourselves. We can't because it's a hindrance. It's a hindrance for what God has planned for us. The enemy is a liar. He's a liar. God has plans for us. He wants us right here, full of his fullness. It tells us that his, well, he, he just, that's what he wants. Too bad we don't want the same thing. Oh, no, some of us do. Some of us want to be drawn closer to the Lord. 
And that's what Song of Solomon said. Draw me closer, Lord. Draw me closer. Draw me, Lord. And you know what the word says? This is a lie from the enemy. Ah, God's not with you. Nah, God's moved. You screwed up again. You screwed up. You screwed up so many times that God just said, forget it. Forget it. My mercy's run out. My grace, his grace has run out. Just forget it. The word of God tells us, I already read it, that he is with us always. Jesus is with us always. And I'll give you a little extra boost. Jesus said that he had to go to the Father. And in his leaving, he would not leave us comfortless. He would give us a guide into truth. He would give us another gift. The Holy Spirit that leads us. You don't know where to read in Scripture? Ask the Holy Spirit. Where should I read, Holy Ghost? And he'll tell you. It's up to you whether you're obedient or not. Because pride stinks. I can do it on my own. I've got strength. I got through this past week. Are you fooling yourself? You don't know who is praying for you to be able to get through the week. You didn't do it within yourself. Stinking, rotten, lying pride. You don't know the prayers that were prayed. You don't know all of the angels that came to your defense because there was such a great battle going on in the heavenlies that they thwarted what the enemy was going to be doing to you. You don't know that. But I know it. I just told you what the word of God says. That there's angels in the heavenlies fighting for us. That's the word of God. You can't do it by yourself. Oh, no, I can't. But let me tell you something, Satan. I'll tell you what the word of God says. I've got a whole heavenly host that's fighting for me. You've lost the victory. Jesus overcome. I belong to him. I have part of that inheritance. It's mine. And you're not robbing it. You're not stealing it away from me. You're not coming in unawares because the Bible tells us to beware of that. The Bible tells us. Lest the enemy comes in unaware. He does try. He does. Yep. Any little crap. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And you know what my unbelief does? I'll tell you what my unbelief does. You use it, throw it away, don't take out of it, whatever. It works for me, so I use it. I take my unbelief and I fill it with scriptures. I have to stand on the word of God. I have doubt. I go to the word. Whatever my situation is. And he directs me. The scriptures that I need to be using for my unbelief. How faithful is our God? He's so faithful. He even helps me in my unbelief. I got so excited. I think my house shook. And it wasn't from a volcano or earth tremor. (laughs) 
when my husband was alive, he would tell you, I dance in the kitchen. Oh, you better believe I dance in the kitchen. I go out throughout my house singing praises unto God. That didn't change because my husband went on to glory. That didn't change. The enemy wanted to steal my joy. God is my God. Jesus is my Savior. The Holy Ghost is my guide. I'm so blessed. I can't help myself sometimes. I have a time in my car. I don't give a ho. I don't give a ho. People think I'm waving at them because I'm praising. <laughs> okay, Lord, well, bless their day. That put a smile on their face. I don't know. I don't care. God is worthy. The word says, and this was hard for me to grasp a hold of. But if I believe the word of God, I got to believe all of it. I can't believe just a part of it. The word says to praise him in all things. Even in the midst of the storm. You can find something to praise God for. You can find something to give thanks that God has done. Let's not be like the Israelites that kept forgetting about God's mercy. That kept forgetting about he supplied for them when they were going through the wilderness. Let's remember the blessings of God. The greatest gift is our salvation. And then all the blessings come. Well, this one was healed. Well, that one got a job. Well, this happened. Well, that happened. Oh, isn't that something to give him praise and thanks for? Oh, yeah. I'm going through the midst of a dry, barren land. God, I praise you that you're with me. Because your word said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. My heart was broken. Forty years we had together. God, <laughs> I don't know your plan. I don't even know what you have planned for my kids now. They always went to their father for counsel. They went to him for wisdom. Because he spent time in the word of God. I don't know what your plans are, Lord. Thank God. I'm walking by faith. Not by what I see. People thought I was going to leave this church. And go somewhere else. That's not what God told me. God didn't tell me to leave. I need to stay where I'm at because God's got a plan. He's going to fulfill that plan as long as I'm here and obedient where he wants me. There was a change that happened, and I shared it with the people here. When I asked God to heal my heart, I needed it. I needed a healing. I had to humble myself and go before God and ask him to heal my heart. How could I do what he wanted me to do when I hurt so stinking bad? I didn't want to get up. I had to work. 
I had responsibilities. I just wanted to stay in bed. There's so much that I miss that we had together. Devotions. <laughs> I don't have anybody to do book devotions with now. God said, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so faithful. We can do devotions together. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading me and guiding me and not forsaking me. Climbing the mountain. Phew, you get tired at times. But the Holy Spirit is faithful for a refreshing. He's faithful to do abundantly above that which we can even ask or think. I just ask for a small thing. I ask for a small thing. Heal my heart, God. And God is so faithful. His loving, tender mercies, his grace. You know what the word of God tells us? The enemy is a liar. He's a liar. God's word tells us that his mercy and his grace is new every morning. Every morning. His grace is with me. His mercy is with me. The Holy Spirit is with me. It's, he's all powerful. He enables. When we fall short, he enables us. Oh, how I praise him and thank him. How I tell the enemy he's a liar. You have to speak the word, people. You have to speak it. You have to know it in order to speak it. Defeat the enemy. Put him to flight. Don't let him make a nest. Fill your mind with the word of God. Yes. Know what you know to be true. Yes. I know that I know that I'm saved. How do you know that? Because I experienced it. <laughs> I asked Jesus Christ to come in my heart. I asked him to forgive my sins. I left that woman's study that I thought was going to be a gossip session from those church ladies. I left there a brand new woman. Changed. When Jerry came to pick me up, I walked out and I had this stupid grin on my face. I couldn't stop smiling. I didn't know what I was smiling about, but I was just smiling. I didn't even get all the way in the truck. He said, you got saved, didn't you? I cried like a baby. Yes, I did. And the only thing that I wished was that you had been there. He said, I was praying for you, honey. I wasn't nice. I was mean. <laughs> so, yeah, I needed prayers. And God answered those prayers. And then it wasn't long after that. There was an invitation to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He's all powerful. He's changing lives. He's changing mindsets. You can't do it within yourself. That's what I learned. That's why I needed it. Man, it didn't take long for these feet to take me right down there. I just practically danced like a dip. I was eager and excited. Bam! No, it wasn't bam. It wasn't earth shattering. It wasn't quaking, shaking. It wasn't. It was a simple, subtle love of God that filled me that I couldn't keep my mouth shut. A new language. Oh, yeah, a new language. Yep. A new language. I didn't have to understand it. I didn't care if I understood it. I didn't want to. I had asked for it. I went in faith believing I was going to get it, and I got it. Oh, yeah. Empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Oh, the enemy is a liar. 
He's a liar. He's a father of lies. Get with the father of truth. So you know how to use the weapon effectively against him. He'll help you. That he will. The word of God tells us that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Take that, enemy. See, you got to know the word. You got to know it. You got to dig in deep. I know that this is going on, but I'll tell you something right now, you lying imp of hell. God is coming to my defense. He's coming to my defense. And he's going to take what you're trying to make for evil and turn it around for his honor and his glory. You talk like that, Sister Sue? You betcha. God says that we have power and authority. Yes, I talk like that. I'm closing with Ephesians 4.27. And it tells us not to give place to the devil. Ooh. That's a command. That's a command. Don't give place to the devil. What? Why would God put that in his word? Because he knows our frailty. He knows our carnal human nature. He knows it. So he put it in there so we could use it. This is all about tools and how to use them. My arsenal, don't give place to the devil. Don't give place to him. You know, the word of God tells us, and I'm not preaching on tithe. I'm not. I could. Boy, did I find some scriptures concerning tithe paying. God put it on my heart. He's put it on two other people's heart that belong to this congregation. So God's going to be teaching us a lesson about tithing. That he is. And it's for a reason. But the word of God tells us we pay our tithe. Okay? We submit unto God. Resist the devil. And he'll flee from us. But first, we have to do something. And that's obedience. That's obedience. I know that's a question that the pastor uses. Have you been paying your tithe? I'm not sitting in on his counseling sessions. But I know that's the word of God. And when they're attacked and they're bombarded, he's trying to help them. Are you paying your tithe? That's none of your business. Well, that right there tells you his pride. It is his business because he's the shepherd over the sheep. If God had him ask that question, it's born of the Holy Spirit. Don't you get it? The Holy Spirit speaks. We get uncomfortable with that. But it's because of his love that he speaks. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord God, that it is all-powerful. It is all sufficient. You have all knowledge, dear God. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would help us overcome the evil one, Lord God. You have given us your word. It is truth. It is life. It is the way. There's no other way, Lord, except through you. So, Father, you have a heritage for us, the servants of the Lord. You have that, Lord God. Father, let us remember that we need to go after it, Lord. Lord, that there is a fight, but you have given us the weapons we need 
to combat the enemy, the deceiver, the liar, the deception, Lord God. You have equipped us. So, Father, let us take your word, hide it in our heart, and, God, that we would be fully equipped for your walk, Lord God, that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen.